What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Brooklyn Fight, Shoot the Fire, Shoot the Fire, Brooklyn Fights in the building. Trying something different. Trying to do something different today. Got a new piece of equipment. Testing it out, so bear with me. Um, Errol Spence. Congratulations again. Shout out, Errol Spence. Great victory last night. Tough, hard-fought victory against um, former WBC world champion, welterweight champion, I should say, uh, Sean Porter. Really, really good fight from both men. I mean, hard, gritty, nonstop action from beginning to end. Great fight. You know, it was basically hit or miss for either man to win the fight. One man make a mental mistake, and that was the that was the you know the costly decision in the fight. Barry Hunter had said something after the fight that I had totally agreed with. That I had explained in my post, my pre-fight analysis was, you can't lose focus for one split second when you fight in Errol Spence because that one mistake, he's already the fan favorite. He's already the media favorite. That one mistake will be very costly and will cost you your belt. And that's exactly what happened when Sean Porter dipped low in the 11th round and got caught with a nice, I mean, a nice left hand. It was it was really pretty. It caught him right on the jaw. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Sean Porter was definitely dazed. He was definitely hurt. Um, wasn't no off balance shot. It was a solid left left hook, right on the jaw, bang. And and Sean Porter had to gather himself, and and by doing so, he, he touched the mat with his glove. Now, with that being said, we are gonna go past that. We are gonna move past that. It is what it is. Errol Spence won yesterday. Now, going forward, though, what I really really liked even more about Errol Spence yesterday, and I, I like I said, I don't have no hate towards Errol Spence. I, I think he's a good fighter. I just, I, you know, certain fights I, I picked against him with certain fighters. But um, what I did like what he said yesterday was he's not afraid to go to 154 and challenge J-Rock. That, you know, that's a sign of greatness. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a sign of, oh, you know, I, I can't make 147 no more and I'm leaving the, the welterweight division. That's a sign of wanting to be great. You know, seeing your potential right now, both young men, talented, world champions, um, that's a really, really good fight right there. I don't know if Al Heyman and PBC would make the fight, but shoot, that is a phenomenal fight to make. I'd actually prefer to see him, Errol Spence versus J-Rock, than than to see Errol Spence against Danny Garcia, who I believe is the number one contender to the WBC title. I'm not sure who's the number one contender to the IBF title, but I definitely prefer to see a fight between J-Rock and um, Errol Spence because I think it will be more entertaining. Um, as previously stated, I think Errol Spence has too, is too strong for Danny Garcia. I think Danny Garcia has a lot of punching power, but I don't think he has the, enough strength to keep Errol Spence off of him. I think a fight between J-Rock and Errol Spence would be fantastic. Contrast of styles. Both men love to dig. They love to go hard. J-Rock is a technician himself. He's shown that over and over again. He's proved that over and over again. His, his only loss, I believe, is to um, to ch one of the Charler brothers, the, um, the former IBF Super Welterweight Champ, and now the WBC Middleweight Champion. Um, so at the end of the day, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see a J-Rock and Errol Spence fight. And, and it brings us back to the days of, you know, Pound for pound, the real pound for pounds. Don't matter what weight class you're in. No matter if you're fighting out of 125 or 130 or 135, y'all meeting up some way, somehow in the middle. If you you come in weighing 10 pounds over fight night, so be it. I come in weighing my regular weight. We still going to fight. And may the best man win. That's what boxing used to be. That's what boxing used to be based on. I'd love to see these type of fights take place where fighters used to go from, I mean, Canelo doing it now, honestly, where fighters go from one weight class to the next and come back down and do what they do. Canelo went to 168, washed up Rocky Field and came down and beat Danny Jacobs. Now he's going to 175 to fight Kovalev. That's pound for pound. That's, pa that's pound for pound. You taking care of the best of your division, then you move up to another division, claim a world title, and then you're going up another division to fight the best of that division, the world champion that division. That's pound for pound action. That's the stuff that boxing needs to get back to. And, I, and I'm and I'm liking the way I, I, I like the Kovalev and Canelo matchup. I think that's a pretty solid matchup for both men. 
I think a younger Kovalev will wash up Canelo easy work, but I don't think an older Kovalev is going to have an easy time with him now. And and we all know why. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all know why. <laughs> but yeah, man, these, these are some great matchups right here, man. Canelo Kovalev, J-Rock possibly against Spence. Um, I'd personally like to see Danny Garcia and Terrence Crawford. I'd love to see that because they've been circling each other since 140 days in the amateurs. I'd love to see that, man. Shit, I'd like to see a Danny, uh, 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 um, Terrence Crawford and Mikey Garcia fight, honestly speaking. You know what I'm saying? I'd actually like to see Terrence Crawford against Manny Pacquiao. Personally, a fight against Errol Spence would be good for both men, both men career, but I think it would be a boring fight. I think I, th I really do. I think a fight between Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence would be boring. I think it would be too, too technical. Too technical. I do believe Terrence Crawford will win. You know what I'm saying? He will outbox him. He will find a way because that's what Terrence Crawford does. But I think it would just be too, too technical of a fight. Like when 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 um when Bud fought uh, Victor Postal. It was it was a technical fight. It was a great boxing matchup, but it was just it, it just it was just too technical in my opinion. But he pulled out the win like he needed to, like he was supposed to. But with that being said, I would love to see J-Rock, Errol Spence. I think that's the fight. I think all the media fan, media, the fans out there, that's the fight they should hype. You know, y'all was hyping. Y'all was loving the Charlos. Y'all was loving Jared Hurd. Y'all love Errol Spence. Y'all should push that even more. Errol Spence against J-Rock. And then I would like to see where the, where, who lies with who. Because after J Rock be heard, everybody was like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> you know what I mean? Going into the fight, the media had J Rock like the same way they had Sean Porter, no wins in Mikasa. Nobody thought J Rock was gonna go down there in his hometown and defeat him the way he did. He didn't just beat him; he he beat him mentally and physically. He beat him. Can J Rock go to Dallas and do that to Errol Spence, or would they fight in neutral ground like somewhere in L A. or something like that? You know what I'm saying? Love to see it. Errol Spence, um, so far, he, he, two fights on pay-per-view. Garcia and Porter. Wonder if they put J-Rock and um, in, in Errol Spence in pay-per-view in the Staples Center again. I mean, you know, put him on pay-per-view again. I don't know. But the young man is selling. And he's making a, a big, big name for himself in the sport of boxing. A big name from, for himself in the sport of boxing. So with that being said, I'm going to come back to y'all with another one. Who's your pick? If, if, if J-Rock and Errol Spence meet at 154, who you got? Who you got? Xavier Porter, shoot the fire, Brooklyn fights, I'm out.